all right guys welcome back to my youtube channel so in this video we are going to talk about the display properties that we have in our css so again this is also a very important concept in css i already made a video on css positioning properties if you guys want to check it out click on the i button or click on the link in description so you can learn another amazing css property that is positioning so let's get started in this video without wasting any further time so every element on a web page is a rectangular box every element has its own space its own border margin padding and everything we have already we already know that if you are moving that forward in html and css the display property in css determines just how the rectangular box behaves okay so now right now i have only these three rectangular boxes i'll explain you the code later on when we go to a code editor there are only a handful of values that are commonly used in this display property okay so the default value that we have is inline that is used for mostly many elements and then we have many elements that are block and then let's let's go to these uh, one by one and we'll understand what each of them actually means so talking about the code that we have on this in front of our screen so i have written this normal html code this right in front of you there's nothing extra written i've uh, just created an h1 that's called display and then we have this div with two classes that is block one and block two and now why i've created those two classes i'll tell you so we have this three divs like that we have just given one two three inside it now here this is universal styling to remove the normal margin and padding that is already there so it will be easier to understand then i have colored uh, this i have this body where i have aligned them to center but as they are block this is no use you can see there is no change only the text that was there on the center has moved back here okay so this is just font family and color then i have given this block a height width margin color text align and then font size then i have given this block three blocks with different colors okay so this was the normal styling so if i hadn't used this block as a class what i had to do was i had to copy all of this code and i had to paste it inside each and every block so rather than that what i did was i just created a common class of block added it to all of these three divs and it did the work saved us time and space okay so now moving forward the first property that we're going to talk about is called as inline okay so display is inline actually you know what we'll give it a new heading and we'll see all the inline elements over here okay inline display and we'll save it okay this is the default value for elements if you think of an element such as anchor tag or if you want to make a text bold or span how wrapping of text happens in those element without any breakage in the code or without breaking the flow of the text okay so if you take example the em tag if you use a em tag for a certain part only that part of code is affected rather than the complete code okay and the inline elements also accept margin and padding we have created links so links accept margin and padding they also accept height and width okay so let's see what inline elements are so for that let's add let's say we'll add a few links okay and uh we'll add two three links so that i can be able to explain you and the last one we'll add okay so suppose these are the three links that i've created now you can see let me zoom in a bit let's add a little bit of space let's increase the size of our body tag let's give it a height of and we'll save it okay so now you here you can see three links are there right one after the other now let's see if we can add them padding and margin now i'm just showing you as an example of what inline elements are so i've not given them specific class or anything so i'll just call them here let's say a i'm using links so like directly i'll call them let's uh, give it a margin of one rem you can see now there's margin from all the sides let's also give it padding of 1 rem and again you can see it is more clearer and more better 
let's see if we can give it a width let's give it a width of 5 rem okay let's try height let's give it a height of 5 rem it does not show up right now because margin and padding will only push the elements horizontally but not vertically and in inline elements you cannot add height and uh, sorry height and width it will just ignore it i have written this because i wanted to show you that it does not work in inline elements you cannot add height and width to inline elements okay it won't work we can just add margin and padding okay so another example if you want you know you can check it out i have also post if you want uh, to check out what all types of inline elements are there you can just google it or you can follow me on instagram i have posts there which will guide you through all of these properties so for right now i'm not going to keep on explaining every single inline element that is there you can just google it it's very simple i just wanted to get a gist of what this inline elements are inline elements that mean it means that each element will appear one next to the other and if we make changes it won't break the flow of the text okay or flow of the structure that you are using the next one that we are going to see are called as block elements now to show that block elements i have already created this three blocks okay these are the three blocks that i have created now the biggest example of a block element is this h1 tag so what a the number of elements are set to block by a browser okay there are usually container elements such as the div section your lists and then you have paragraph tag h1 tag block level elements do not sit in line but break past them by default they will take as much as horizontal space that is there okay they can take the whole width of the page so no matter if other element is there or not they'll just take the complete space that is there available now if we here we have h1 and again we'll add one more h1 here let's say block now you can see after display we have so much of white space remaining but is it taking that white space is it taking that taking up that blank space no it is not but if we compare it with strings strings by uh, sorry links yeah they were taking up white space they were right next to each other so there is a difference between inline elements and block elements okay so h1 is a block element so again this div tag that i have used they are also block elements you can see here even though there is so much of white space it is not uh, appearing next to one another it is just taking up the entire width even though this the element is so small okay so this is block elements now again you can try this one thing again if we add let's go here and uh, let's delete this h1 for a while now i want you to guess if you can add height and width to this block elements so the answer is right in front of you i have created this block class in which i have passed height width margin and even i can even add padding here if you want i can even add a padding of 1 rem here and you can see it looks fine it looks perfectly good the code does not break it works it gives it height width and everything so this was block elements now the next type of element that we're going to talk about in display the next type of property that we're going to talk about is called as inline block now the only drawback that we had in inline was we cannot add height and width to it and the only drawback in block we had was we cannot place elements next to one another so in inline block both of these problems were overcome an element set to inline block is very similar to inline in that uh, we can you know add a uh, next element one to another and is also similar to block because we can set height and width so we are going to experiment on these three blocks itself so let's go back to our code and here what we'll do is we'll add a display property of inline block we'll just copy it and place it in all three blocks okay let's see what happens place it in all three blocks now you can see element appear next to each other just as our inline elements okay so the, 
it is looking very similar to the links that we have created and we have even added height and width to it which are not able to add inside this anchor tag okay so this is the difference between block inline and inline block okay now the next one that we have is the last one apparently then we also have display of flex flex box grid but those are very advanced concept and we are only going to talk about the basic css display that were there before flexbox and grid as well okay so if you guys want a video on flexbox and a grid so make sure you comment and tell me so that i can make a video on it but for now the last property in display that we're going to see is called as none display none okay so what does this display none do the word itself tells us the meaning so display none practically erases your element as if it never existed on your website so let's check this block 3 and i'll clearly add a display of none here boom the element vanishes as if it never even existed on your website even if you inspect element you cannot see this element anywhere okay if if you can find it here you can see block 3 you can see display is none okay so these were the four properties that we saw inside display the first was inline the second was block the third one was inline block and the fourth one was none now i want you guys to stop at any part that you want try the code out for yourself because the more you play around with the code the more you try things the more easier it will be for you guys to understand this heavy css concept it is not even that heavy but many beginners find it hard because lack of practice the main advanced css starts with flexbox grid then then you have uh, not and before after that is main advanced css then we have media queries this is basic css that you need to understand but many people don't practice it that is the reason they're not able to understand now if you guys want the code that i have written in this video make sure you comment down that you need the code so i'll create a channel where i can i'll create a group where i can share all of this code so you can get a head start and you can practice it out for yourself you can see whatever changes i have made i will arrange the code in a proper systematic manner so that will be easier for you guys to understand now if you i have understood from this video i want you to subscribe to my channel right now like this video comment on this video so that more and more people can watch and learn this amazing stuff without even paying for it okay because your subscribe helps me reach one subscriber helps me reach many many people and people just watch my video they do not subscribe to my channel so make sure you don't do that and subscribe to my channel it will motivate me to create more amazing video so that's it for this video i'll see you guys in the next video